Hey, it's Mr. Lineski here with Unit 10, Section 2, Arc Measures and Chords. We're still talking about circles in this unit. Let's get started. Um, we're going to be talking today about central angles and a couple of different theorems that involve chords. Uh, we talked about what chords are in the last section. Um, so a central angle of a circle is any angle whose vertex um, is at the center of the circle. So um, we're going to talk about um, measures of the central angles and measures of their intercepting arcs here in a second. Um, so if a central angle's measure is less than 80 degrees, um, it's called a minor arc. So what that looks like here, if I, I have a circle here and the center is A, um, I could draw this uh, angle here, angle BAC, where that's now a central angle because the vertex is at the center of the circle. And let's just say that I said this was 60 degrees. Um, so the measure of this arc right here, so how it's intercepting that arc, the measure of the angle and the arc are the same thing. So if the measure of the angle is 60 degrees, and the measure of the arc is also 60 degrees. Um, if a uh, central angle's measure is greater than 180, that's what's called a major arc. Um, so what that looks like is, um, if I have an angle like this, but let's say that I mark it as B, and then there's some point C, and then D over here, um, the way that I actually call this the major arc, or how you specify what you're talking about, you actually write it like this, the measure of B, C, D, and then there's a little arc above it. So that tells me, oh, I'm going from point B to point C and then to point D. So I'm talking about this whole section here. Um, that would be considered a major arc. And one thing I forgot to mention over here, um, if it's a minor arc, you could write that as the measure of arc BC. So if it's a minor arc, it only uses two letters. If it's a major arc, it uses three letters. So notice that we had two here and three here. Um, and then finally, if the central angle measure is 180 degrees, that's called a semicircle. Um, what happens with that is that it actually goes through, uh, it's essentially a diameter. So if I actually draw a diameter of the circle, so it goes um, through the center, has two points on the circle, um, this angle here is considered 180 degrees. For semicircle, you can actually use two letters or three letters. Um, the book kind of uses both interchangeably, uh, so it really doesn't matter if you use two or three letters there. Um, so I could call that arc BC, and that equals 180 degrees. A um, couple quick things to remind you of here, that a circle has 360 degrees. And then don't forget, too, that the measure of the central angle is equal to the arc that it intercepts. Um, like I mentioned here, if this central angle is 60 degrees, then the arc that it intercepts is also 60 degrees. Um, so down here we have a quick little example um, where it says find the measure of each arc of circle P. So this is telling us that the center is P, uh, where RT is a diameter. So we know that the line RT is a diameter. Um, so now it asks what's um, arc RS. So if the central RS arc is right here, and the central angle for that arc is 110, then that means that the arc itself is also 110 degrees. So now the question asks, um, what is the arc of RTS? So remember, that tells us to go RTS. So it's basically everything but this 110 degrees. So if you remember that there's 360 degrees in a circle, we're basically getting everything except the 110. So now to solve this, you can do 160 um, minus 110. And that gives us 250 degrees. Um, so now, notice how they sort of switched it up on us. Now it asks RST, so it's the same three letters but in a different order. Um, RST goes from here to here. So that RT, you mentioned in here that it's a diameter, so that makes it a semicircle, which means that it's going to be 180 degrees. Um, now it's asking us 
what is the measure of angle TPS. Um, TPS is this angle right here. So notice since this is a diameter, that means these two angles here form a linear pair. So we'll do 180 minus 110, and that gives us that that is a 70 degree angle. Um, so this is 70 here. And then finally it asks us what's uh, the measure of arc TS. So arc TS is right here. Central angle was 70 degrees, therefore the arc is also 70 degrees. So that's all about minor, major, and semicircles. Um, so now we're just going to quickly look at the arc addition postulate. Basically it's kind of like segment addition postulate or angle addition postulate. Um, it essentially just says if I have an arc or two arcs, let's call this B, C, D, I could say that the measure of arc B, C plus the measure of arc C, D is equal to the measure of arc B, D. In other words, if I add this piece to this piece, I get this whole arc and a delicious looking ice cream cone. Um, congruent circles. Congruent circles are when two circles have the same radius. So if I draw two separate circles, this one's circle A, this one's circle B, uh, let's say this had a radius of 5 and this had a radius of 5, I could say those two circles are congruent. So we can say circles are congruent. We can also say that arcs are congruent. That just means that two arcs have the same measurement. Um, so if one arc had a 30 degree um, measurement and the other one had a 30 degree measurement, I could say the arcs are congruent. Um, so we're going to look at some examples of congruent arcs and some properties and things that we can discuss from that. So one of the theorems here is that in the same circle um, or in two congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So in this example here, I have two chords drawn, A, B, and C, D, and they're marked congruent. So that means that this arc, arc A, B, and arc C, D would also be congruent. So A, B is congruent to C, D if and only if the chord or the segment A, B is equal to the segment C, D. Um, so here's kind of an example of how we would use that. So in circle E, and there's a little typo here, these should be arcs, the little arcs aren't on the notes. Um, measure of arc BD is equal to 3x plus 11, and BC is equal to 2x plus 48. Well, if I look here, BC and BD are arcs, but the chords that intercept them are marked congruent. So that means I can set these two things equal to each other. So I can say that 3x plus 11 is equal to 2x plus four, or 48, excuse me. Um, subtract the 2x over, that gives me x. Subtract the 11 over here, that gives me 37. So x equals 37. But now it's not just asking us to solve for x. It's asking us to find the following things. So now they want us to find what arc BD is. Well, now that we know x is 37, we're just going to substitute that in for x. So we can say 3 times 37 plus 11. Uh, and when you multiply that out, you get an answer of 100, whoops, 122. Um, so this arc right here from B to D is 122. I also know that if BD is congruent to BC, that arc BC is also 122. So that's the answer for letter B. Um, now it's asking us to find what DC is. So here's where you have to remember, oh, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So notice I've covered this part of the circle so far, and DC is what's left over. So to find what DC is, you're just going to do 360 minus 122 minus 122. Um, and when you do that subtraction, you end up getting an answer of 116. So then it also asks you what's the measure of angle DEC. So if this arc here is 116, DEC is the central angle that intercepts that arc. And if you remember, central angle has to equal the same amount. So that should also be 116. 
Um, and then finally, it's asking us what's the measure of arc um, BCD. So let me erase some of this. Um, so BCD goes from here to here to here. So essentially, I'm going to add 122 plus 116. Um, and that gives me an answer of 238. Um, so here's another theorem about chords. We said if one chord is, perpen is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, um, then the first chord is a diameter. Um, if QS is a perpendicular bisector of TR, um, then we can say that QS is the diameter of the circle. So again, if we have a line drawn and we're not really sure um, where the center of the circle is, but we know that it's perpendicular and we know that it's bisecting a chord, we can say that this line's a diameter. Um, another theorem that we have is that if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arcs. Um, so very similar to what we just looked at, except sort of the converse of that. Um, so in other words, if I told you that EG is a diameter, um, and that EG is perpendicular to DF, then what I can claim is that FH is congruent to HD. So I can claim that this chord is congruent to that chord, or this segment. Therefore, too, if the segments are congruent, I can also say that those arcs are congruent. So I can say that arc FG is congruent to arc GD. Um, and then our last theorem here is that in the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Um, so AB, this chord here, is congruent to chord CD if and only if the distance from this perpendicular segment, GE, is equal to the distance from this um, little segment there, which would be EF. So if these two pieces are equal to each other, then I can assume that the chords are equal to each other, or vice versa. If I know that the chords are equal to each other, I can assume that these little pieces are equal to each other. Okay, so the bottom three questions here are triads. All you're doing now are using the three properties that I just discussed to um, set some things equal to each other or to find missing pieces. Um, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.